Started off with Missouri, Texas A&M. Um, I watched the end of that SMU game. I watched Arkansas, Tennessee. I watched some of the KU game. And then Sunday I watched uh, the Texans and the Bills, um, the Cowboys and the Steelers, and then some of the Bengals and the Ravens. Do you find yourself watching games, breaking it down like a quarterback or as a fan? Um it's it's kind of a little bit of both. Like I'll if I see like a play that we ran before, I'll be like, oh my, uh, we have a version of that player. That's and then I'll say like the name of the play. Like that's our version of it, and that's how we run it. Um, but it's hard to just watch football now and kind of break it down a little bit or see oh how can we or we we should run that or stuff like that. So it's hard to just watch football as a fan anymore. But um, I try my best. What does this game mean to this team? I think it means means a lot just uh it's obviously we want to look at it like another week but um we know how talented of a team Colorado is and um coming off a of bye week we should be very well rested to be able to go out and put our best foot forward so I think it means a lot just for um where we kind of set ourselves in the big 12 moving forward and we don't want a, another conference loss I didn't expect you to say anything that Dylan shared with you in confidence but is does Dylan coming from Colorado add a little sauce to this recipe? I think uh, maybe a little bit, and this is probably one that he wants a lot because whenever you play against an old school, you definitely want to have your best game and um, be able to contribute to the win. But ultimately, we don't. Um, I don't think he looks at it that way. I think he looks at it just like any other week and um, doesn't want to let the game get to him too much. Just wants to go out there and play his game and um, do what he does best, and, and that's, you know, get him the ball and be explosive with it. Avery, what's the biggest thing that you focused on over the off week? Say that again? What's the biggest thing you focused on over the over the bye week? Biggest thing was just taking some time to step away from football, um, get a little reset. After Thursday hit, uh, they gave us off Friday uh, throughout the weekend. So just being able to have some a little bit of time away from football, I got to go back home, um, see my grandpa, see some some old coaches, some friends. Got to spend some time with my brother and, and parents this weekend. So just a little bit of time away from football um, to be able to reset and, and just have that time away, um, so that whenever I did come back, I, you know, I was fully ready to go. And then coach said whenever uh, some of the younger guys got to kind of play during this week while. The, the starters were, were kind of resting. Blake was, was a guy that really was able to shine. It was his first time really getting to run things. What, what, what do you like about what he does? Yeah, and the dude's a competitor, and he, he works really hard. Um, he doesn't want to lose in anything he does, and I think that's a great trait as a quarterback because ultimately our job is um, you can get caught up in all the stats, but at the end of the day we just want a win um, in, the, or a win in that column, and that's how he is. I mean, he works hard. Um, he's, he's really smart and he's, he has a, a really strong arm. He's really talented and um, definitely is going to be uh, a player to watch in the years to come. Avery, what's impressed you from what you've seen about Shador Sanders and Travis Hunter for Colorado? Um, I, I think both of them can play. You know, Travis Hunter is one of the Heisman favorites for a reason. He's a, he's a really talented player and, and what he does on both sides of the ball um, is, is really special. And doesn't get enough uh, a credit, I don't think. Uh, a lot of people, you know, have their two cents to say about him, and a lot of people want to hate on him. But he plays really hard, and being able to play as, as many snaps as he does week in and week out is, is truly special. And Shador's a, a really talented quarterback. He can spin the ball all over the yard. and um, uh, But I, I'm really confident in our defense and, and the plan that Coach Klanerman has for him. And obviously, I, I'm really excited to be able to, you know, be able to match up against guys like that. And focusing back on your team, from your pr perspective, what's made DJ Gooden such an effective running back this season? I think really it starts with our offensive line, um, opening up holes for him, and really just doing a, a great job in the run game. And obviously, Coach Riles is that's his that's his forte is his offensive line and and run game and stuff like that. So he does a really good job of with scheming the right stuff different ways to, to get to the same type of runs. And our offensive line opens up holes for DJ. And, and the biggest thing DJ does is he doesn't let one person bring him down. Um, it's going to it's gonna take more than one guy to, to get him on the ground. And um, after he, his yards after contact has to be something probably insane because um, 
he, he's he's really effective after after that first tackler. He makes that first tackler miss. Ethan, uh, Jason Hill was climbing mentioned that Colorado likes to bring a lot of pressure, and I know that their defense has sort of been known to be incredibly aggressive, uh, you know, at getting to the quarterback. Uh, what have you seen from, I guess, their pressure looks and, and what challenges does that present for the quarterback? Um, I think the the biggest thing is uh, watching Colorado over the last week or so is um, they're really a really talented bunch. And like you said, they do like to bring pressure. Um, the biggest thing for us is we have to do a really good job of preparing for that this week. Um, what are ways we can get the ball out of my hand quick if they do want to bring pressure and what are other ways um, we can I identify the pressure before it happens to be able to pick it up so that um, we don't have any miscommunications between the offensive line and, and me and the running back so that we can get those things squared away pre-snap so that we are going to be are able to be as, as effective as we want to be post-snap. The team has been so effective rushing the football so far to this point in the season. What's the sense of pride that you all take just in that identity of being able to kind of punch them in the mouth and just keep going? I feel like the biggest thing is um, I, I feel like our offensive line takes a lot of pride in that. And we want to continue to, to be effective running the ball as the season goes on. And I think we have a really good running back room that opens up things for them. And a lot of times people can get lost in what DJ and Dylan are doing and it opens up holes uh, for me to, to run in and for me to you know be effective and eat in the run game as well. So we got to continue to be able to throw the ball because I feel like the best thing we did um, against Okie State was be able to throw the ball to, to open up run lanes because it, it just helps DJ out and helps the offensive line out tremendously whenever we can throw the ball efficiently. And we never want to be one dimensional. So keeping the defense on their toes and being able to um, exploit their weaknesses in, in both, both ways.